Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Invest Africa. I'm Bronwyn Nielsen. Now, Angola is striving to tackle the physical, social and political legacy of a 27-year civil war that ravaged the country even after its independence in 1975. This week, we unpack the opportunities and the challenges that exist in one of Africa's major oil producers. Bordering the South Atlantic Ocean between Namibia and the DRC, the southern African country covers a total surface area of just over 1.2 million square kilometers and is home to roughly 18 million people. Conflict between the popular movement for the liberation of Angola, known as the MPLA, led by José Eduardo dos Santos, and the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, known as UNITA, which was under the leadership of Jonas Savimbi, plagued the country. By the end of the war in 2002, 1.5 million lives were lost, 4 million people displaced in this quarter of a century fighting. Angola is now faced with a daunting task of rebuilding its infrastructure from roads, ports and railways to education and health systems. The combination of oil and war also explains why sectors such as coffee, once a big employer, have also been neglected, with oil reserves estimated at 13 billion barrels and production by 2011 more than 1.8 million barrels per day. Angola is now sub-Saharan Africa's biggest oil producer, after Nigeria which it exports to its main trading partners, China, USA and India. Other sources of revenue come from the exporting of diamonds, coffee and fish. Although agriculture provides the main livelihood for the majority of the population, half of the country's food is still imported. Other import commodities include machinery, medicine and vehicle parts from import partners Portugal, China and the USA. Angola's economy has been making inroads. In 2011, GDP growth increased slightly to 3.5% in 2011 from 3.4% in 2010. This was driven by rising oil prices and a strong non-oil sector that grew by almost 8%. Growth is projected to expand to 8.2% in 2012 and post at 7.1% in 2013. The Angolan democracy turned another page when the nation went to the polls on the 31st of August this year. And after winning 72% of the nation's votes in the recent elections, Jose Eduardo de Santos's MPLA will need to enact extensive employment, social and development programs. Joining me in studio to take a closer look at Angola as a business and investment destination, Jose Silva, managing partner KPMG Angola, and Roger Ballard Tremere, honorary chief executive, South Africa Angola Chamber of Commerce. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining me. Let's start with the business landscape uh, and a little colour, perhaps, Jose, being based there to yeah. what one can expect when doing business in Angola. What certainly one could expect is a, a significant challenge in doing business in Angola. The opportunities are tremendous, but the challenges are also significant. So I think the one can expect is, well, an hard job to, 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 to catch those opportunities, but uh, there are uh, significant opportunities. Well, let, let's focus a little on the challenges. Roger, what is the biggest challenge that we're going to confront in Angola? Probably the biggest challenge for, for people from English-speaking uh, territories uh, will be the language. If you don't Obviously speak Portuguese, Portuguese. Uh, you're asking for trouble, unless you make a plan one way or another. Uh, tomorrow, President Dos Santos uh, takes uh, the presidency officially for the first time. And uh, the outcome of the election uh, which, which has confirmed uh, multi-party democracy uh, is, has, has improved the business environment for those that want to go into Angola. Let's talk about the challenge with Portuguese being the official yeah. language. Do we have English companies setting up, and when I mean English, English-speaking companies setting up shop in Angola through joint ventures, using translators, or is it a no-go area if you do not speak Portuguese? Well, uh, you have obviously uh, several uh, English-speaking companies uh, in, in the country and there, there is a, um, a large number of English-speaking uh, professionals in Angola. The question is, uh, is uh, well, for, for the extent that uh, uh, the foreign investors are coming into the market, 
there is not enough. So, so clearly, I, I agree that the language is a, a significant barrier, as it, as it is all the all the the lack of uh, human resources capabilities, technical capabilities, not only language but professional capabilities, because there is a, an education issue around as well. So, so I would say that, uh, for example, the oil industry already uh, employs a significant amount of. Uh, of uh, people that speak English and uh, other industries as well, but to to the extent that uh, that uh, uh, that investment is coming uh, from the outside, it's really uh, an issue for the country, and the language barrier can be an issue. Other than language, let's focus on a couple of the other challenges yeah. before we move into the opportunities. Challenges, Roger. Well, traditionally, uh, people have referred to the bureaucracy. Uh, which certainly is is uh, confronts one with uh, with a lot of uh, um, uh, questions and um, what our, our, our comment to South African companies, for example, uh, that uh, that wish to engage in in Angola and are worried about the bureaucracy, is that if they are engaging with Europe, the bureaucracy is exactly the same. So it really, it's a matter of getting down to understanding what you have to be compliant about. It sounds onerous when you talk about bureaucracy. Can we say there's just too much red tape in Angola? How do you see your way through or see yourself clear when it comes to the red tape? Well, it's, it's, um, it's a complex country and, uh, and uh, I would say that having everything happening at the same time and uh, with a, a, a significant uh, uh, velocity, uh, everything changing, uh, it's quite difficult for the country, for the institutions, for the companies, for the persons to, to, to get this uh, pace in and, 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 and achieve what uh, is required. So, so I would say that it's a, it's a, it's a challenge, but, uh, but the, the real challenge is to, to get and achieve this growth at the same time uh, in all areas uh, that, uh, that, that are there. Uh, and exploring these opportunities, it's from time to time it's, it's difficult. Oil could be seen as the lifeblood of the economy and obviously gold and diamonds also form a significant portion of what is driving the Angolan economy. Is this where the opportunities lie? Uh, indeed, that's, uh, the, the, the diamonds and the oil, now gas as well, uh, that's where the opportunities have traditionally been and they continue to be. Uh, for, for countries that are not, um, uh, not in, the, in the petroleum game, uh, there is still space for, for those companies in, um, in the services industry. So the, the petroleum sector needs IT, it needs all these things. And that can come from places uh, on the continent as well as places abroad. Uh, if I can just uh, refer to the, the, uh, the abilities of the Angolans, in the retail sector there are foreign companies that have invested into Angola and they have their distribution centers run by Angolans and all their outlets run by Angolans. Angolans can do it give them a chance. So it's about joint ventures. That's what you're saying. Joint ventures, are they the way in which to do business in Angola? It's uh, one of the ways and probably it's one of the better ways to, to for a foreign investor to come into the country uh, because obviously the, there are uh, many cultural issues and uh, how to do business in Angola which obviously can benefit from, from having that partnership and that joint venture. Obviously there is also some lack of entrepreneurship uh, in, in Angola, so, so it's, uh, it's, it's really important to find the, the right partner there to, to leverage your business uh, uh, when you are coming into the country. We're very cognizant of the infrastructure troubles that the African continent as a whole faces. What does this landscape look like in Angola, specifically when it comes to, to infrastructure? Are you ahead of the game or are you pretty much in the same camp as the rest of Africa? Well, I would say that uh, we are pretty much uh, on the same uh, page uh, as uh, the rest of Africa. A as the introduction was uh, in this program, there were 27 uh, years of civil war uh, preceded by the colonial war, so the, the, the country was almost fully destroyed. So It almost came to a standstill. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, 
much as has been done in the last decade, but uh, one can say that much more is to be done uh, in the next decade. So uh, there are massive programs in terms of infrastructures, energy being the, the key uh, uh, strategic uh, area to invest, uh, but also ports, roads, uh, airports, facilities, uh, well, many, many infrastructures, also on the education, uh, um, housing, well, all the, the infrastructures and needs to be uh, reconstructed and, and uh, be built to, to support the, the growth of Angola in the next decade. Now we know the Chinese and the Indians have been helping out, out when it comes to infrastructure challenges in terms of investment. Are we seeing that trend in Angola as well or is language too much of a barrier? We mustn't forget that uh, China has Macau, which is Portuguese speaking. And uh, if you, if you uh, visit the, the camps uh, at projects, you often find that uh, there, is a, uh, there is one or more Chinese that come from Macau or from the area around Canton. They speak Portuguese with a Cantonese accent. So uh, actually the landscape's perfect then? It's perfect for them. The, 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 um, you, you really wouldn't recognize Angola. If you'd been there in 2002 with the destroyed infrastructure and you visit there today, Today you can get your inputs into your agricultural project in, one, in the remotest parts of Angola and you can get your outputs out from the remotest parts of Angola. You can, you can travel by bus anywhere, you can travel by taxi anywhere. Yes. So you're saying progress has been made? Tremendous progress. When Roger highlighted the fact that, that services are in need and yeah. specifically around the petroleum sector, is that where key opportunities lie in your opinion, Louis? Uh, I, I would say that the opportunities lie um, in every sector, in every industry. Obviously the oil and gas and the associated services industry are quite important and uh, have led in the past uh, clearly the foreign uh, direct investment from, from, from abroad. But uh, looking into the future, I would say that uh, sectors like the agriculture, uh, sectors like the infrastructures, all, all, all the, the reconstruction that needs to be, to, to be uh, made in the country will lead to significant opportunities. Uh, there is also a, a key strategic uh, um, uh, direction that uh, the, the government is taking to try to rebuild the industry in the country. So uh, clearly uh, there, there will be uh, significant incentives to, to make the things and produce the, the goods in Angola, replacing the, the, the imports. So that will lead also to significant opportunities uh, on the top of telecoms, on the top of all uh, the traditional uh, industries. There will be uh, the, the industry and, uh, and uh, the infrastructures that will lead for, for sure the foreign direct investment.